What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Built Not Bot Shop. Uh, it is still a disaster in here. I really have not had any time to clean it up, so don't judge me for that. But I'm about to start a project that is something that I've been looking forward to to be able to build for years now. And it's going to be the most meaningful project that I have ever built, and I don't know if I'll ever be able to top it. And that is a crib for my three-month-old son, Kai. And I kind of had a vision about this crib and laid out a few different designs. And over the past few months, I've came up with new ideas, but I'm finally settled on one and we're just going to run with it. And it's going to be all hard maple. Uh, the entire thing's going to be hard maple all the way around the outside. And it's actually going to be solid wood on three out of the four sides. So a lot of cribs just have the, the typical slats all the way around. This is going to be solid wood on the front and the back and then like where the foot of it's going to go as well. I know this doesn't make that much sense, but it will in a little bit. Then I'm going to cut out kind of like a 45 degree angle in the front of it and then do slats across the front of it there. But right here is what I'm starting with. And it doesn't look like much now. But you just got to trust me that this is going to be awesome in the end. Right now, I'm just laying out boards, getting my measurements ready to start cutting everything down to size. And then I'm going to start to joint it and plane it all flat. And here's my drawing board here. Uh, 32 inches tall, 55 inches long, and 29 inches wide. And this is uh, made to fit a little mattress that we got for him. Uh, so that's the measurements I'm going to run with. And the mattress is about six inches thick, it looks like. Um, I thought about doing miters on the corner and doing like a really sharp angle. But I think I'm just going to go with straight 90 degree joints there. And then maybe add some decorative dowels just to kind of spice it up a little bit with some walnut inlays because we do have a lot of walnut in our house and this is gonna be the first thing made out of maple. So right now I'm working on one of the side panels, uh, the shorter ones for the crib. And I don't really have a plan with this whole project. I'm just kind of winging it, but this is kind of the layout that I'm going for. I measured up from the bottom six and a quarter. The mattress is six inches, so that'll give a little bit of playroom there. And then I had a little bit of a beveled line here that's seven at the bottom from the edge and then three at the top. And I'm gonna leave this two inch piece across the top as well. So I'm basically cutting out this trapezoid shape in the middle. And then I'm gonna fill this in with slats is my idea. Um, just got to do some layout on a few more panels and I might tweak some things between now and the, the time to, that I make these cuts. But uh, at the moment, this is what we're going with. All right, so this is one of the longer panels and I just set up my track saw. I've got the Festool 75 and I cut out the rough shape for this. Obviously I couldn't get into these corners uh, with the round blade. So I'm gonna look for my pull saw and I will finish cutting out and cleaning up these inside corners, but hopefully now you can kind of get a feel for what this is going to turn into. And uh, like I said, I'm just kind of winging it here and I might change things along the way, but so far this is what we're rolling with. All right, so I just cut out that center shape and this is just a cutout piece. Let me know in the comments what you think I should make out of this. I'm going to have two identical like this and two that are a little bit longer. Uh, first thoughts that came to my mind are maybe a really cool coffee table or maybe like a flower planter or something like that. But I still got three more of these to cut out. So far, so good. And of course, everything needed a bunch of sanding. I started with 120 grit and I did several passes with 120 grit and then I finished it all with 150 grit. Uh, this maple takes forever to sand. Uh, so I did bring out my hand plane to help even out some of the uneven edges. Now that I had all the sides done, it was start to work. It was time to start working on the slats for the crib. I dug through all of my old inventory and found a bunch of scrap pieces of walnut from previous projects. I love being able to utilize pieces like this that would otherwise just get tossed. 
Uh, there's just something about repurposing lumber and making it beautiful that I just really, really like to do. So all this walnut was just found in my shop and I'm going to cut it all at one inch wide and it's going to be a finished thickness of three quarters of an inch. And here is all of the slats. Isn't it crazy that this would otherwise have been considered junk wood or firewood? It's beautiful just as it is. All these are the same width and thickness. I just need to do a little bit of work rounding over the edge. And up next, I've got to lay out all of my slats. This took quite a bit of time, I'm not going to lie. And I uh, threw around the idea of what kind of spacing I was going to have. I started with just a... Uh, the thickness of one of the slats as the, as the spacing, so there'd be a one inch gap between each slat. And then after laying them out, I kind of felt like it was a little bit too closed off that way. I wanted more room for Kai to look in and out of his crib, and I wanted it to feel a little bit less uh, closed in. So I decided to scrap the idea of a one inch spacer, and I doubled it and made it two inches, and I think that that was the right call here. Uh, let me know in the comments which one you like better. So I decided to switch and go with two inch gaps instead of one inch gaps in between, each, in between each slot here. And I think it looks a lot better and it'll go a lot quicker uh, versus the one inch gap. And I did all of my layout lines, including the one that kind of goes off to the edge here. I'll probably run that to about this line here. And as you can see, every two inches I have my lines made on each side of this and then my game plan is I just ordered a one inch router bit from Freud and I'm just going to set up and run that router bit uh, perfectly straight and flush and go up about one inch probably an inch and a quarter and then take a chisel and where that rounded area is from the round router bit I'm just going to take and chisel and square that all off. It's going to be a lot of work, but in the end, I think I'll be left with a really sturdy slat. It's not going to go anywhere, and I think it's going to look really great. So these slats will be flush on the back side. So this is the inside of the crib here where the mattress will be. They're going to sit flush here, and then when you look at it from the outside looking in, they'll be inset. Uh, about a quarter of an inch, probably three sixteenths of an inch. So they'll have a little bit of depth to it and I think it'll look really great. Next up, I've got to do this one. So this is my current setup. I've got a one inch straight cut bit in my router and I set up this clamping jig so that I can uh, just stay nice and straight. Now I'm gonna take out this mortise here and then I'm gonna go over to this side and take out that one next. And I'm just gonna keep working my way and moving my clamp all the way along until I get to the end. I preset my depth so that I have a stop right here so that this plunges the exact thickness of one of my walnut slats over here. And I'm just going to take my time. I'll probably take a quarter inch pass and then do the entire pass after that and just keep kind of plunging down and then I'll have a little bit of chisel work at the end, but hopefully this works out. So here's what I'm left with after the first pass. I love using brand new router bits. Just cuts so smooth and so simply uh, and so easy, but um, I still have to notch out all these corners, which is going to be a lot of work with the chisel, not going to lie. I'd love to hear in the comments if you have a better idea on how to notch out all these corners. Because for every slat, I'm going to have to notch out uh, two mortises, and there's a lot of slats. So let me know in the comments. Otherwise, I'm just going to use my marking knife and cut out these nice clean edges and then start chipping away with the chisel. One down a lot to go. 
And finally, I finish routing out every single mortise for the slats. Up next is a whole lot of chisel work, uh, but I'm not complaining one bit. I've been enjoying this whole project the entire way. The router makes a huge mess, by the way. And I worked with a chisel for many hours to do this. It was all worth it for this moment right here. So satisfying. So now that every single slat was laid out to its respective mortise, it was time to start laying out additional lines for uh, setting up my router and router table to put a round over edge on these slats. Uh, I, I didn't want the sharp edges uh, for many reasons. Mostly, uh, I didn't want any slivers or if Kai's reaching in and out of those bars, I wouldn't want him to get cut or snagged up. So I wanted to round everything over and make it nice and smooth. And setting up my adjustable square as a jig for this allowed me to do this uh, in a repeatable and fairly quick fashion. Uh, just be super careful with the router table. It is the tool I fear the most in the shop, and it's the tool in the shop that's given me my worst injury to date. So I do want to make a safety disclaimer here, and like I mentioned, the router table is one of the tools I fear the most. It's just very dangerous. Your hands are exposed to an open blade and you can get tear out. And in one instance, I had a piece of lumber completely tear out and I ran my hand through it. It wasn't pretty. But you'll see me here without push blocks and you'll see my hands getting fairly close to the bit. I, I highly recommend if you're able to use blocks to use them. I did attempt to use them on these slats, but I just felt extremely unstable with them. I couldn't get a good grip on them and I felt a little bit safer uh, and more controlled without the push blocks. So here you'll see me just using my hands. I'm doing my best to keep them well out of the way you'll see me cross over reach across to the other side and then run it through the rest of the way um, i took extra time here because of how risky this is if you do this at home i highly encourage you to take extra time like i did or just to avoid it altogether and use push blocks here um, always remember that safety is the number one concern and without our fingers, we can't do any woodworking. So keep that in mind when ever using any tool in the shop. But you'll see here that rounded over edge that I was hoping for. And all that's left to do on these is a little bit of sanding. I just pulled out a 150 grit, uh, just some regular old sandpaper and sanded them all by hand. All right, so I have all the slats in place. And in order to glue this up, I just punched in a bunch of domino mortises and I'm using these uh, smaller dominoes here uh, just to keep my alignment. I'll glue all these in and then of course on the corresponding side, I also have a bunch of dominoes milled into the side here. And my glue of choice is going to be tight bond three, just because I think this is gonna take a little bit of time to get all situated and get the clamps on. And that will allow me a little bit more setup time than tight bond one or two. There's a lot of discussion about whether dominoes add any strength or if they're just strictly for alignment. In this case, I think they absolutely do add strength, not necessarily in this side of the crib, but in the opposing side where it's straight into end grain. End grain does not glue up very well or hold very strong. And this gives you a floating tenon with full glue coverage that allows you to have a little bit more strength and more so helps you line everything up perfectly. And I rarely ever show the process of gluing everything together because quite frankly, I stress out about it and it's a little bit of a madhouse. I'm running around sweating, trying to find all my clamps. And here you'll see a ton of clamps on. 
to ensure I get adequate squeeze out pressure. And then up next, I just added these little nailing fins. I glued them down and brad nailed them in. Uh, these are a permanent part. And these will hold up the uh, slats that actually support the weight of the mattress and whatever else is in the crib. So I'm putting the bottom slats in that will support the weight of the bed and uh, my son in the crib. And to do that, I just cut two inch slats and then I'm using a two inch off cut here as a spacer block. So there'll be a two inch slat every two inches on the bottom of the crib here. And the slats themselves, I just put a brad in each side. I did not glue these down. I figured if for any reason I ever need to adjust the height of the bottom of the crib, or adjust anything for that matter, they'd be easy to pop out. I did not want these permanently attached. They aren't gonna go anywhere once that mattress is in place anyways. And after all of the work on the crib, I started to work on the base and I threw around a bunch of ideas. I wanted something super modern because I thought the crib itself was looking a little bit more traditional and our home is modern. So I went with these cool angles and uh, I'm going to basically paint these matte black when they're all said and done. Uh, I like to cut out and weld my own bases versus buy them. There's just something fulfilling to me about doing everything yourself. And I just thoroughly enjoy every aspect of metalworking and woodworking. So I like to tack everything first and then I lay my full beads. Sorry, the camera gets a little weird when I uh, lay these full beads out. But uh, these legs are overbuilt, I'll say. For this crib but i overbuilt them for two reasons one i never want them to fall apart of course but two i wanted to add a little extra weight to the base of this crib because i'm not going to screw it to the wall some cribs you're supposed to fasten to the actual wall so they don't tip over so i wanted to make sure the base was extra heavy and wouldn't be able to be tipped over if kai's running around in there or jumping around in there and I finished everything off with the grinder. I wanted everything nice and smooth. There's some legs where I like to leave the beads exposed, but most of the time I like to have them completely flat and then paint them. Here's the end result. I was just using some Rust-Oleum uh, matte paint. I just love the way it looks. I also drilled a couple holes in the bottom of the base, which I will insert bolts from the ground upwards into these threaded inserts that we put onto the crib. And with the help of my wife, we were able to get the crib moved into Kai's nursery. And we did a little extra decorating as well. He even has a swing in his room right now. But this build was a blast, and I hope you love how this crib turned out as much as we do. All right, everybody, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the entire process of this crib build, and I hope you like the crib as much as we do. Uh, this is one of those builds that I have waited so long to do and thought about uh, how I was gonna make it for many years now, and it's fun to have an idea just written down on a piece of sticky note paper that I thought of one day and taking that concept and bringing it to life. Um, this was my most meaningful full build and it was a blast uh, from start to finish. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, we love you Kai and we'll see you on the next build.